in order to better understand how a service provider uh, use digital identities, let's have a closer look to a password-based login process. So here we have a user, there is a web service, the web service runs on the service of the web service provider and uh, when the user wants to use the service, the user has to register. Registering means the user enters, has to enter a username and has to enter a plain text password into the form of the uh, website. So he can select the username, John13 for example, and then he uh, types in uh, his password. You see it's a quite secure password. Uh, it uses uh, different types of, of, uh, of sign different types of signs, uh, numbers and others. So the user enters username and plain text. Then the password and the username is sent over the internet uh, to the server of the service provider. Then the server disguised, that means hashes as a password and compares it with hashed password which is already stored in the user database for that user. So in the first step, when the user registered, in the database the digital identity is established with the username and the password and all the other data that are needed. And then later when a user comes back to the service, on hand of the username and the password, it is checked uh, whether uh, the service uh, knows the user. In the right way, in the database, the password is not allowed to be uh, stored in plain text. The mathematical uh, way to uh, disguise it is to hash it. But unfortunately, there are many service providers who do store passwords in plain text, or with old and unsafe hashing methods, so that if cyber criminals get access to the database, then they see the, uh, they see the password in the, uh, in the plain text. So uh, the cyber criminals, we saw this already, try to get access when they uh, uh, break into the service. They particularly are interested to get access to the user database because then later on they can use, they can misuse the service on a regular way by misusing a digital identity of one of its users. So the uh, cyber criminals uh, manage to get, uh, when, when they manage to get access to the user base, they download the user base uh, with all the digital identities of all the users uh, that are registered with the service. And in particular, they wrap the, pair, uh, consist, the pairs consisting of username and password, which allows them later to officially uh, um, uh, use the service. Why it's of particular, uh, why, why it's particularly difficult when uh, passwords are stolen? Why it's so dangerous? An attacker can misuse username password uh, easy to officially log into the service where the password was stolen. An attacker can also attempt to log into another service using the same password. <coughs> That's often very successful because many users use the same password for different uh, accounts, for different digital identities. Sometimes they do not use this in an in a identical way. Sometimes they do some uh, slight uh, altered uh, data, for example, coding also the name of the service into the password. But for the attacker, if they uh, get such a password, uh, username, password combination in their hand, there is a huge chance that they can use this password also to break into other services. Problem if identity data are stolen, the user does not know this. The user can only see that uh, his data were stolen when some of his accounts were misused. And for example, he has to pay for a service he never used. How 
to store the password safely in a correct way. This should be done and should be expected by all the service provider because there is a cryptographic method that help to make it difficult to misuse a password for attackers. And this technique uh, to, uh, in this case, a password is by hashing and encryption. When we look and uh, consider and analyze the experience with our HPI identity leak checker, then we see that many of the service providers store passwords in plain text. About one third of all these, and of course this is very unprofessional, because then if attackers are successfully able to uh, steal such a uh, user database, they can immediately use a password because it's stored there in plain text. Some others use methods, hashing methods, which are outdated meanwhile. And outdated for such a hash method means that it's easy to break it, uh, so that it's not much effort needed to reveal the clear text password out of this weakly hashed password. For example, MD5 and SHA-1 are such passwords. But what is the way to work correctly, to hide correctly the passwords in such a user database to uh, disguise it? This is done by means of hash function. What is a hash function? A hash function maps the clear text password. Hash function meshes, uh, uh, maps any word or any uh, sequence uh, of signs into an uh, obfuscated fixed length text. This text is a hash. So we have the plain text and function, the hash function is applied to produce a hash. And the idea of this hash function is that it's almost impossible to come back to reveal only knowing the hash to find out the plain text, the original plain text. So it's a one-way function. Hash functions are distinguished so that it's only possible to recover the original password from the hash with an extreme effort. So that it needs years of computation to get it back. So this, this hash function, this cryptographic hash function that are used to disguise the passwords that are one-way function. In this way it's easy to, uh, to compute, but in that way it's almost impossible. We will have and offer you an excursion uh, in this week uh, where we uh, go into more t details uh, with these hash functions. So frequently used hash algorithms are MD5 and uh, SHA-1, but both, both are now considered unsafe. When the computers become more powerful, uh, it becomes more easy to reveal from the hash the original uh, password. Uh, when I mentioned that it needs years, uh, 10 years ago, then today it could be computed in minutes. And if it can compute it, if, it can, uh, if the password, if the hash can be cracked in minutes, then it's uh, to be considered unsecure. So uh, safer hash methods are used and also are available. So SHA-2, uh, SHA-512 or SHA-3 are in place and uh, should be uh, uh, installed uh, to produce the hash of, the, of a password for a user database by all internet services. Here is an example to show you uh, how this uh, hash look like. So for demonstration purpose we uh, take the unsecure MD5 in this example, uh, then the hash value is shorter and fits uh, to this, uh, uh, to this uh, slide. So this is a password. The password uh, where we start with uh, in the beginning of this uh, clip and we apply the hash value, in this case MD5, and this is the resulting uh, hash value. The resulting hash value. And 
uh, if there is a secure hash function used, then this computation is easy. But to reveal from that side the original password, it's difficult. Uh, I remind you, MD5 is no more secure, so it's possible with large effort and computational power to uh, uh, reveal the password in relative short time. <coughs> so there are more secure uh, hash functions uh, in place, but the principle is the same. The principle is the same to hide a password by hashing it. Now, uh, when the password is uh, in the da user database in a hashed variant, then there is no clear text password. How the password is validated when the user comes next time back to the service? The user starts to enter his or her plain text password. We use the same as we did in the beginning example. Then the service sees, aha, John Thirteen, and looks in his user base, in his user database, and sees, okay. Uh, remembers a user, John 13, and then there is the hashed, uh, the hashed uh, uh, password. So in the next step, the password here has to be taken by the service, and a new hash value with the same method has to be applied to the password. In our case, in our example, we take MD5 because of the short hash value, and then a hash is produced. And for validating uh, whether the user is authorized, whether it's the right user, it's now only uh, you need to be compared the password, the hashed password that stores in the user database of the service and the, uh, computed, uh, the computed password that was computed from the input uh, of the user uh, to that service. And in case both agree, then uh, the login uh, is successful. And if there is a mismatch, then login failed. Mismatch can also come if you misspell, uh, you, if you input your password, you misspell it, then of course it's a different, it's a different uh, string. And then the hash function comes with a different result. And here <coughs> it's uh, no agreement between two. In this way, the uh, data, the uh, digital identity, can be uh, secured and there is this common secret, the password between the authorized user and the service uh, that allows the service to remember the user and to give him or her access to, his, uh, to its resources. But sometimes it's not so easy to distinguish, uh, to distinguish by hashing uh, because it could happen as follows. We could have same uh, two different users having the same password. And then, of course, uh, in our database, we, the username is stored, and then aside of the username, the hashed password is stored. But what, uh, how to secure the case when user E and user B use uh, the same password? Then the same hash value is stored in the database. And in theory, it would be possible that user A is misusing the account of user B and uh, orders some shops, uh, sh do some shopping uh, on uh, the payment of user B. So if an attacker knows, for example, one user's password, he knows the password of all other users uh, with the same password. In this way, the hash can be guessed by hashing all words in a dictionary. So, for example, uh, a password uh, is the, in the attacks. Also, for that case, there is a solution in place, and the solution looks as follows. The same password is artificially disguised differently uh, every time. And the idea behind this is that before the hash value of a password is calculated, the password is extended by a random string. The random string, the name is salt, 
So here we apply our hash function not only on the password, but also on the, uh, on the salt before the hash value is computed. In this case, now user A and user B, which have the same password, but of course uh, the password was prolonged by different salts, then uh, it results, is the same password results in different hashes. So that it's no more possible uh, to misuse um, uh, the uh, hash value of a password that is known. In uh, uh, this way, the service provider secures the secret, the password, by uh, uh, storing it not in plain text, but store it in a, a form of the hash value. So also for the employees of that service, it's impossible to conclude from that hash value the real uh, password of the user. And the same is for cyber criminals. They can steal the data, they can see there is user A, but as long as they have only the hashed, well, the hashed password, they cannot misuse the password and try, for example, to apply it also for other services of that particular user.